We've all heard the term bias before. What exactly is a bias? A bias is any systematic deviation from a response or a decision that you would expect a rational decision maker to perform. Keep in mind that the deviation needs to be systematic. It always has to be in one direction and not random. If the deviation is random, it is noise. If it is systematic, it is a bias. Think about a simple bias called overconfidence. The idea that people believe that they know more than they actually do. This is a bias because people on an average always believe that they know more than they do. It's not that some people believe they know more and others believe that they know less. That would be noise. But the finding that most people believe that they know more than they do is a bias. Now how do we correct for biases and what are the different ways in which we can think about those corrections? Uh, there are two words that you'll hear me throwing around, debiasing and rebiasing. Both debiasing and rebiasing talk about the idea of making a bias go away, but they do so in different ways. And the best way to illustrate the difference between the two is to use a simple metaphor. Here's a picture of a door of my office, and the door has a door stopper on the top, which is supposed to keep the door shut every time somebody opens it. It's got a simple spring mechanism. Every time you push it open, the spring contracts and the door stays shut. But what you see in this picture is the fact that my door is unfortunately open. There is some error in the spring, there is some mistake in the spring, due to which the door does not come to close in the fully closed position as it should. How do I fix that problem? There are two things I could do. The first thing I could do is I could actually go in, remove the mechanism from the top, clean it up, replace the spring, and make sure that the door now closes. That is a de-biasing mechanism. What I've done is I've identified the cause of the bias and I have fixed the cause so that the bias no longer happens. Again, keep in mind the bias here is the fact that the door that is supposed to be in a closed position stays open. Here's a second way in which I can keep the door shut, which is I can introduce a locking mechanism or a force that physically pushes the door shut. What have I done here? The bias still says because there is still an error in the spring but I have imposed a second mechanism on top of the first one to cancel out the effects of the first one. That's called a re-biasing. So again, a de-bias is a situation where you identify the cause of the bias, you fix it, and the bias goes away. A re-bias is a situation where you have a bias, you impose a second bias that acts in the opposite direction, and now the door stays shut, people behave as if they were not biased. Let's look at some simple examples. Overconfidence. How do we make sure that people are not overconfident? It turns out that there are two common strategies for reducing overconfidence. One strategy is simply getting people to write down two or three reasons why they think that they would be wrong with whatever judgment or prediction that they have made. Simply getting people to think about the what if scenario reduces overconfidence. Why? Because the mechanism for overconfidence is the fact that people only look at information or reasons that support their judgment, not for reasons that oppose it. By physically instructing them to come up with the reasons that, that oppose their judgment, you debias that particular judgment. Now let's look at a second example, a self-control failure. The fact that people want to save more for the future, but don't. We talked about a simple program earlier called Save More Tomorrow. The idea that you commit to saving more in the future by promising to set aside portions of your next salary increase. Now here's the interesting part. That pro program works, it turns out people who participate in the smart Save More Tomorrow program actually save more, but they don't become any better at self-control. What you've done is you've used the principles of loss aversion and the fact that they simply forget that they're in the program to fool themselves into saving more. And so that's a classic example of a rebias. You've got a bias, a self-control failure. You take two other biases, the fact that people forget, the fact that they have loss aversion, to cancel out the effects of the first bias. And that's a classic example of a rebiasing strategy. In many ways, a lot of the choice architecture that we're going to talk about is a rebiasing approach. Because what we're trying to do is we're going to try and design environments where the fundamental flaw in decision making doesn't matter because something else cancels it out. 
But before we do that, let's spend a few minutes talking about the different kinds of debiasing strategies. There are three kinds, and we'll actually get into a lot of detail in these kinds in the next week. The first one is a motivational strategy. The idea is simple. If you motivate people to come up with the right answer, they will. How do, we, how do we motivate people? You could give them financial incentives. You could give them economic incentives. Or you could respond to their sense of being socially correct. Put peer pressure. Have them make public commitments. Once there is some external stimulus that gets people to be more motivated to be accurate, they are more likely to process information more effortfully and to draw more information into their decision. The second set of strategies that we have used to reduce biases uh, are cognitive strategies, getting people to think differently, or training people, or, or generating templates that they could use which provide them with the right kind of data, or forcing them to think through model-based approaches for making decisions. And finally, technological strategies include the use of decision supports, or, or aids, or online databases to inform people with the right data to make the best choices. So in sum, we talked about two different kinds of approaches for getting rid of biases. There is debiasing, and then there is re-biasing. They both accomplish the same, but theoretically, they are very different.